Okay, let me see if we can summarize here. Earlier we did the IP camera, which is a Wi-Fi internet protocol camera made for security kind of stuff. So I'm kind of doing the same thing in a different way here. What I'm doing is I'm testing a Raspberry Pi running off of a battery system and the Pi has a camera and I am remotely firing the camera and then I can remotely pull the files off of the camera all through Wi-Fi. Not super high precision work here. Okay, that'll kind of work. Okay, uh, on this screen... Hang on, let me back up a second. From okay, this is um, apparently in the newer versions of Windows 10. I didn't realize this existed. SSH is a common thing for Linux um, and Unix and other things, but I didn't know that it was put into Windows. I just happened to see it recently. Uh, so I'm running on a Windows computer at the moment. So what we can do is we can remotely log into a Linux type system and then we can run commands as if we were sitting in front of the computer. And so what we're going to do here, SSH and then user is pi at, I named that one bus pi. So I've got one pi that was in here, one that was in the bus, one that's going to be on, on the rover. Okay, so this one's bus pi. And then I'll reach out and look for it. Okay, now it's asking for the password. Okay, now you see the login change. Now we are user pi at bus pi. This is as if I was connected to it with a wire. Like as if it was, like for instance, if this was the Raspberry Pi I was connected to, this one is called Solar Pi, I would do it the same way I would be SSH user pi at Solar Pi and I would connect through it. Now in this case it's plugged in through Ethernet, but what we're doing is we're using the, the Wi-Fi router to talk to the other Pi. Okay, now the other Pi I'll show you in a minute. But what we're going to do here, also keep track of the time, it's 12.32 now. Okay, so I'm going to change the directory into the Python folder. And then I'm going to scroll through my recent commands so I don't have to type it again. I'm running a Python 3 file that's named cam single dts.py. DTS is date timestamp. So we hit enter. There's a five second delay. Now it captured an image. And then we'll just run that three times. Doesn't make any difference, but just to prove that it can be done. Now, I'm going to get rid of this window. I'll go over here to, this is an FTP program called FileZilla. And you can see I'm connected to BusPy. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just off screen, I'm going to hit the button that says Refresh. Now I loaded three files. I'm trying to hold the camera and not drop it. So I'm going to select the next three and then we will download them and that will pull the files off of the remote Raspberry Pi and put them on the local file system here. So I mentioned before 1239, 1239, 1239 and the clock is probably off a little bit. Let's take a look. Yeah. That clock says 12.40 and it's actually 12.54, but it's pretty close, so I'm not going to change it. I think, yeah, it probably got a time sync off of the phone when the phone was on. And I think I turned the phone off now, so it's not getting a new time sync. Normally a Raspberry Pi doesn't have a built-in clock, but if it's connected to Wi-Fi, it'll get a clock signal and then it'll work that way. So that's why these are showing up a little bit wrong. Okay, so this has been downloaded. So, this is an image from the Pi. Oh, 
I just realized something. The time should be stamped up here, but it's, um, you can't read it because it's on a white background. Let me see if we can fix that. This is the whole code from what we're doing. So, uh, we're using a Pi camera. We are setting the file size. Frame rate is as if we were doing video, but I'm only doing a single image. And we're gonna do a text. I don't see an easy way to change that. It's, it is easy to change, I just don't know how to do it. Down here is where it's um, month, day, year, hour, minute, second. And so it's creating a file name based on what time it is now, or what time it thinks it is since the clock is wrong a little bit. Some of this code was set up as if it was going to do it continuously and we're just doing one. Okay, I was thinking I could easily change the color, but I don't see, and I'd have to look it up, so we're not going to do that right now. Okay, control X, back to the command. Okay, so these images here, put this down here, that's next to a rock. And it's windy outside, so you can see the bush has moved around a little bit. Okay, so basically, I am taking these from one computer, through Wi-Fi, through the SSH command, to a Raspberry Pi, and then telling the Pi, using Python programming, to take a picture. And then I'm going through FTP to pull the pictures back after the fact. Okay. Now why is it why is that kind of cool? Okay, so why why is this important? What's happening is I'm realizing I've got three or four pieces to a puzzle that I just found the answer to how to put them together. So for example this is just like the one that's outside. So this is the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Look at it on the inside. Oops don't break it. That's what it looks like. That's the whole pie. That's that's the entire computer. On top of it, on the one that's out there, we've got a little camera that's just held on with uh, with painter's tape. Okay, and that's it. And then it's running off of a battery system, which is basically the same battery system that we used uh, for the Harbor Freight battery test. So I've got a Harbor Freight battery, an inverter, a down converter. Um, and then we got the Raspberry Pis running off a little wall wart power adapter, and that's it. And there's no wires between here and there. It's just sitting there hooked up to a battery running, which that's not really, you know, that exciting anyway. You could do the same thing with a laptop or just put your phone out there. In fact, there is a way just to do this through a phone. Okay, we could just leave the phone tied to the rock and we could take pictures remotely. Okay, that could that could be done. But what I'm realizing is on the rover project that I'm building, right now it's just running uh, radio control. So I've got a little radio controlled four wheel drive buggy that is just, you know, I'm connecting to it as if you're using regular radio control parts. Well, that's what I am using. So that part is pretty simple, but I could just do the same thing with the buggy as it was. What I want to do is to make the buggy into more of a robot. Now, what does that mean? To me, a robot is something that I could give it a specific set of instructions and then let go and it would go do them such that I don't have to manually do it. The difference would be like, say, if you're driving your car, you're actually driving your car. If you have the new cars that can do autopilot, you would say, I want to go to Starbucks and the car would take you to Starbucks and probably not kill you in the process and then it would automatically find a parking spot and it would park or some of them could drop you off at the front door and then the car would go park and then when you're ready you'd pull out your phone and say you know come get me and the car would meet you at the front door that's that's actually happening now um, limited but it, it is happening 
uh, there was a guy, I think in Nevada, legally blind, got a driver's license using a car that was built by Google. So the guy gets into the car, says, let's go to the coffee shop. Since it's a Google, Google interpreted his voice, looked it up on Google Maps, and then figured out how the best route to get there. And it just drove, you know, stopped at the stop sign, signaled, got all the way there, found an open parking spot. And the guy, guy gets out of the car and folds out his little white cane and tap, tap, tap into the, into the coffee shop, and he got himself there. It actually showed him with a driving instructor or a driving tester. So within the within the limited scope, he was legally able to drive his own car, which is just, yes, <laughs> that is so awesome. Okay, so what I'm realizing is at the moment I have, I'm looking for one that's not tied to something. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is an Arduino. There we go. So that's an Arduino. It's a little programmable microcontroller. Okay. All of these rows of pins on the side or sockets are places you can plug wires into. And as an example, you know, this kind of a wire, that little silver part on the end would just plug into one of these little spots. And then whatever's on the other end, in this case, a little stepper motor. Okay. So you plug things into here and then you write the software that this runs on. Okay. These are really cool, relatively inexpensive, and easy to find. And that can, I've got the little radio control buggy is now running off of this. So I've got it set up that the radio controller puts its signals into here and then this interprets it and then it does it. Okay, a little bit extra complicated for the moment, but what I wanna be able to do, for example, if I put a little uh, electrical switch on the bumper of the buggy. If the buggy runs into something, it would know to stop. And then I could tell it in the program, if the bumper is activated, stop, back up two feet, take a turn and go around something and see if you can just get around it like that. There's a lot of the earlier robots, that's what they were doing. They would just bump into something and then back up and try to go around it. And if they eventually got around, great, then they'd keep keep going. and. Now they could have a GPS and a compass that are fairly easy to do. So if it if if you told the robot to go north, and you know some distance, so go 100 meters north. Every time it bumped into something, it would go around it, and then come back to kind of where it was before, and then keep going north. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, so what I want to do is test. And I'm already, you know, this is basically, this is working already. That Raspberry Pi is working. Now, it's only about 30 feet away right now. Okay. But what I realized last night when I was thinking about it, high distance Wi-Fi is an easy problem to solve. What I need to do right now is focus on all of the other things. So if I focus on making it work, later on I can go buy a bigger antenna and that will work on the bigger robot. At the moment, we're doing something that's pretty small. It's uh, shoebox size. Ultimately, I'd like to do something that was at least the size of the big beer cooler. That was the pictures that I showed earlier. But the software, yeah, the software, the programming is the secret sauce. So if I can get the programming to work, we can go buy bigger parts later, but the same software will make it work. That's the idea. Okay. So I'm gonna do a couple more iterations of this, but I've already proved that this part works. The second part is, there's a way that my Raspberry Pi and my Arduino can be connected to each other with like three or four wires. Should be four, but the examples I saw showed three. So I'm a little confused about that. Anyway, um, I squared C. I'm not going to talk about what that is exactly because I'm not the expert. I'm just learning this stuff. But basically, this would become the master and this would become the slave. Every time the master says something, the slave answers, you know, so it'd be like, give me your status. And this would say, okay, here's my status. And it would just be talking back and forth. Okay. You can have up to over a hundred slave devices. Now, a slave device could be an Arduino in this case, which makes that kind of cool because I can have... What did I come up with? 
four different radio control channels on the Arduino. And it, when that basically is all that it can handle, I could say this Arduino is just in charge of driving the buggy with nothing else. And then I can take a second Arduino that could be in charge of something else. And then a third Arduino could be in charge of something else. And then the master would say, okay, Arduino number one, how's the driving going? And it would say, yeah, we fell off a cliff, but otherwise everything's fine. And then the second one would pipe in and say something else. And the third one would say, this guy up on top is an idiot. We'd like to come home now. Okay. Basically, that's how it works. Okay. So the next thing is to figure out how I squared C works. And I've seen examples of it, and it looks deceptively easy. So if I can figure that out, now that I've got this part working, able to take a picture from remotely just with Wi-Fi, if I put this on the robot, now I've got a higher level way of talking to it. So I can send information to it through SSH, through Wi-Fi, instead of using the radio controller. So what I've been thinking of in the past, what if on my radio controller, I've got a switch one is radio control mode, flip it the other way, that's robot mode. So for me, robot mode is, let's take it out of actually hands-on driving every second. And if I'm in robot mode, what if I could sit there at the keyboard and a mouse at the computer? So I could be sitting here, or I could be sitting in the bus looking out, and I could send it a series of commands. So I could say, drive forward, and then stop. And it would sit there, and it would count the wheel turns, and then when it gets to enough turns it would stop and then it would take a picture and then I could look at the picture and evaluate okay where are you what are you supposed to be doing and then I could give it a new command that says okay turn left and then go forward and then stop and it would do it and then I could look back a couple minutes later and, and it, had, it had gotten there this is how they're driving the Mars rovers because you couldn't do it through radio control because it's so far away it takes it 30 minutes for your command to get to Mars and for the rover to send a response back. That varies a little bit depending on where the two planets are. So if the sun is here and Earth is here and Mars is here, that's not too far apart. But if Earth is here and Mars is over here, you got this much distance and at the speed of light, it still takes it time to go all the way back and forth. So the radio command is at the speed of light. So you couldn't be driving the rover directly because you would say go and half an hour later it would run into a rock and you would never know what happened. So what we have to do is we just say okay we literally are going to look at that picture and say oh there's lots of room over here so let's drive this way go around the rock go forward to about here and at the beginning, that's hard to judge, but you know, I know it's about five, if we went forward five feet, we'd be in pretty good shape. And then we could say turn left, and that would take it down the driveway. Okay, so that's the idea. So, let's go take a look at what that really looks like. Okay, there's our experiment. Okay, and then this. That's our little robot car there. And so the idea is, this is our Raspberry Pi that we're using. All of this other stuff is just powered, but we could power this off the same batteries that the ro uh, robot is running on. So we would literally just take this, put it on the top, aim the camera out the front, and we're done. Okay. I'm not ready for that part yet today, but that's basically all it would take. The Raspberry Pi runs on five volts, same as everything else that's there, so I would just set up another power adapter for it and we're done. So, the next thing I'm gonna do, oh. So that's where we are. So we're only going that far. So I'm gonna take it down a little further and test it again and see how we're doing. I'm not gonna go too far today. Not looking too good. All right, this should be easy. It'll either work or it doesn't. Yeah, this was the thing that I was getting stuck on before is I've already proved that this works. And so the next step 
is when I get to the point it doesn't work, then all I got to do is say, okay, I need a better antenna. I mean, I'm running the, the basic Wi-Fi in here. Let's see if it still works. Since I didn't have to shut it off. Oh, hang on. That was the wrong command. Look at that. It worked. So we'll do two more. And then we'll go into the FTP program. And I will refresh the screen. I got two more. And we will transfer those to the other side. There's the transfer happening. It's not super fast, but it's working. Okay, so that worked. So now, I'll close this one, we'll take this one. That's not a super exciting picture, but you can see it's different, and that's including the setup that's here. So here's the inverter that's giving us 12, uh, 120 volts, and there's the power adapter that's running the Pi, and here's a down converter, and the battery is just to the side of that. Yeah, so that's working. Um, I'm not set up to look at a live view, and I think for some of this, this would be completely fine, and so that's working halfway down the driveway. I think just for, for giggles, I'm going to try it at the bottom of the driveway because I know that the IP camera ran way at the bottom, of, past the end of the driveway. So since we're here, I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll come back and we'll do it and we'll see how it did. Okay, it's too far away. Okay, so now we know. The IP camera went further. It's got a bigger antenna on it. Also, I had it up off the ground. I'm testing this right down on the ground because that's how the rover is going to be. Okay, but like I said, this is not a difficult problem to solve. If I got an external, like you can buy Wi-Fi repeaters that you would put on the outside of your house. Uh, they use them in restaurants and campsites and stuff like that, so you could beam Wi-Fi out to your customers. So if I got one of those, I would have a couple hundred foot range. And then you can also get a repeater that takes a weak signal and retransmits it. Okay, um, I think what I want to do by the time we get to that, if I can get the robot taught how to navigate with uh, GPS, then we can go out and we can walk some of the trails I want it to go on, and then it should be able to follow the trails just following the GPS line. And from what I've seen on GPS, it could probably follow a four-foot trail and not, not have any trouble staying on it maybe even less. And then we give it the ability to identify that it's about to hit a rock and go around it or to stay out of the bush or not to drive into the cactus. Okay. And I think um, the next step after that is tell it to go out and drive around the property, you know, and then come back every four hours and report. So all it's got to do is drive to within that circle where the Wi-Fi works, and it would just send a ping back and says, okay, we're here, here's all my pictures. And from what I've seen already, the Wi-Fi was faster when it's close to the house, so just have it drive right up to the house, all of the pictures would download, and then if I had any updates, it would be in an update folder, and then it would automatically pull the update folder, and then it would go out and do the, do the next, you know, do the afternoon patrol kind of thing. Python is a fairly easy language to learn. I've updated it since this, but this is the basic what we're running. But it got uh, three imports, and these are huge. Um, this gives me commands that are pre-programmed from somebody else, so I can take advantage of these and not have to recreate them. That's a really big part of programming. And then we set up some variables. Here's how big the camera is. I changed it to 720p, so 1280 by 720, so it's a bigger picture. But originally it was that. You can change that size. 
Um, and then what we're doing is we're going to make a date timestamp down here based on today's month, day, and year, and hour, minute, second. This way, every time it takes a picture, it's got a unique number. And I can see what time it took the picture, which just makes it nice. Later on, I could also add GPS coordinates to that. So in addition to knowing what time it is, we can see exactly where it, it was taken. So if the rover is cruising around the property, we could go back later and we could look up that GPS location. And, you know, if something happened there, we would know where the picture was taken. Yeah. This line here is remarked out if it's got the, uh, the hash, um, like a dollar sign. What this would do is it could tell it to wait five minutes and then take another picture. Uh, this was made to just continuously take pictures, which would be more useful if the rover was driving around. The other option, though, is I could say every time we stop, then take a picture. So it's not bouncing when it takes a picture. Anyway, that's kind of it.